show. Go, go, go. Let's go, go, go. And show what good friends we can Let's be. Let's give it a try. Come on. Let's go, go, go. And we'll start a commotion. Set friendship in motion. Set friendship in motion. Yes. Set friendship in motion. Slippery Spencer. It was winter on the island of Sodor, and Christmas was approaching. Spencer was on his way from the mainland with the Duke and Duchess of Boxford. They were to spend the holidays on the island and attend a special Christmas party at Suttery with Sir Topham Hatt and several other guests. Spencer arrived at Knapford Station where Rebecca the new engine was waiting. Spencer had never met Rebecca before. Hello there. Oh my, I had no idea that slippery engines worked on Sir Topham Hatt's railway now. Slippery? I'm not as slippery as before. I can grip the rails quite easily now. Pah! Once a slippery engine, always a slippery engine. <laughs> Thomas, do you know who that big silver engine is? You mean Spencer? He's usually a fosspot who thinks he knows better than the engines here on the island. He must be very full of himself. He certainly is. Gordon and Edward had to deal with Spencer several times before, but Spencer usually gets what's coming to him. I wouldn't worry about that silver show-off if I were you. <laughs> That evening, a big freeze came to the island, and some of the rails had started to get icy. The following morning, the weather was frosty and cold. Spencer backed up to his coaches at Knapford. The Duke and Duchess were on board the train with Sir Topham and Lady Hat along with several other guests for the Christmas party. The coaches stood underneath the station canopy while Spencer had to stand outside the station. Come on, come on, mustn't be late for the party. <whistles> Off to Suttery! Spencer tried to pull away quickly, but his wheel slipped on the icy rails. The sudden movement made the water in his boiler surge forward and his driver couldn't shut off steam. Spencer slithered to a standstill held back by the heavy coaches. His wheels spun furiously, but Spencer didn't move an inch. Help! Help! But no one could help. Spencer's wheels spun till his rods ached, but he couldn't do anything to stop them. The driver tried every trick he knew. Workmen came and tried some more, but it was no good. Spencer, what are you doing? We're going to be late for the party at the rate you're going. What? I can't hear you! Spencer was making so much noise that he couldn't hear a word from either Sir Topham Hatt or the Duke. Is Spencer ever going to stop? At this rate, I can't hear a thing, but I really hope so. It had been several minutes before Spencer had used up all of his steam. Reduced pressure allowed the driver to close the regulator, and with a deep sigh of relief, Spencer felt his wheels stop turning. The silence was amazing. James had to come and take Spencer to the station yards for workmen to check him over and to get him out of the way. With Spencer out of commission, we need another engine to take us to the pods. You will be late! I think I have the very solution. Will you help pull the train to Suttery, Rebecca? Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Rebecca backed up to the coaches and was coupled up. Then, she pulled out of the station smoothly and steadily, with no slipping whatsoever. The passengers cheered for Rebecca as they made their way to the Christmas party. Oh. 
That evening, as Spencer was preparing to take the Duke and Duchess back to their summer house, he could hear the other engines. Did you hear how Spencer went for a spin today? <laughs> Streamlined engines are all very well, but Spencer should know by now that he's supposed to move his train too! <laughs> <laughs> bah, humbug. Spencer snorted disgustingly as he set off for home. 